Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma LaFave and today we are painting our last pink flower of our series with the flower color guide with Jillian and today we're painting this fluffy anemone. So let's jump in and get started. Okay, so today we're painting the anemone and I've changed up my palette. I'm using my flat brush again and my Etcher Lab Cold Press watercolor sketchbook, but I'm using some handmade watercolors for this because it had a really beautiful bright pink in it. Um, the handmade watercolors are from Our Car Creations, so I will link them below. And to start, again, I'm using my flat brush and I'm just doing these kind of fluffy petals going around an imaginary center circle. So I just want to make them really loose and kind of jagged and just have a lot of fun with it. So the reference photo, which I'll add here, um, they were really beautiful and just like these fluffier anemones. They almost look like this really cool paper. So I tried to emulate that with these really jagged strokes. And then you can see I added a little bit of green in there like the reference photo had. And the trick with adding green into like a pink, which would be its complementary color, um, you don't wanna move it around too much where it mixes with it and it turns brown. You just kinda wanna tap it in and then just leave it. So you can have that bright green without it turning brown. And I actually went a little bit darker with this flower to start. I think I should have started a little bit lighter, um, but I'm just going around making sure I'm leaving little bits of white space in between some of the petals so they don't look like just like this blob of petals. Um, the tiniest bit of white space will make the difference. And I just went around this kind of imaginary circle and I'm still using my flat brush and I'm just doing these kind of little lines towards the bottom, the little leaves that kind of come from the base of the the petals and then I'm going to do another one. This one's going to be a little bit smaller. I decided to go a little bit lighter for this one so I'm using a lighter wash and this one's going to be a bit flatter so I want you to think more of like an oval shape rather than a circular shape. So I have this imaginary kind of circle in the middle and I'm just doing petals kind of coming off of that circle and the ones that are kind of pointed upwards are gonna be longer and then the ones underneath are gonna be a little bit flatter just to change the perspective a bit. And again, I just added a little bit of green in there for that kind of added green wash. Then just adding a little bit more green in there, again, not mixing it too much, and then a bit more pink to add to it. I still wanna maintain the lightness of that original wash, so I'm not overwhelming it with the darker pink, but I am adding it around some of the edges um, just so you can kind of see the petals. And then next, I'm just taking a really light wash of an indigo for the white parts. So the center of the anemone, before we get to that dark blue center, it was a bit more white and I just want to take a little bit of an indigo just to kind of give that grayish feeling off um, in the center. I'm going to do the same thing with the other one just so it has a little bit of depth towards the center before we do the actual stamens. And then I'm just adding a little bit more brightness to some of the petals, just playing around, seeing what works. So if you see more sharper lines, like the ones I just placed down, that means that my flower was already dry. So you get the sharper lines, they won't blend, blend or bleed into the original petals as much. So I'm just adding some uh, shadows and just darker lines. This was mostly just kind of a uh, experiment. I didn't know exactly what I was going to like, what it, it was going to look like, and just kind of playing around to see what worked. Um, and I encourage you to do the same. If you don't know exactly how something's going to turn out, just play because you can always redo it. You can always learn something from each time you try something new. So for this flower, it was a different kind of anemone than I was used to. So I was just playing around with lots of lines and texture to see what it looked like and what worked.
So continuing on, I'm just adding more layers as the first layers are drying. I'm adding a little bit more darkness to the greens underneath. And you saw I added some darker pinks and more lines. I just really wanted this to have a lot of texture. And so you'll just see that I keep continuing to build on that. So for the leaves, I'm just adding these kind of jagged shapes. They're pointy, they're kind of all over the place. Uh, you don't need to think too, too much about it, but just have them nice and kind of pointed and give them lots of movement. And then once I'm done with my light wash to start, I'll add in some darker uh, values and some darker greens just to give it a little bit more depth. Now that my flowers are dry, I can start with the center. So I'm just doing these like really kind of squiggly circles. I'm leaving little bits of white space in them just for highlights. Um, the center are these kind of round oval circle shapes, but they have like little dots in them. So I wanted to preserve some of the white paper just so it has a little bit of highlights. And then I'm just doing these tiny little dots and I'm using my size, I think my size six or yeah, size six brush to do these tiny dots that are circling around that center. And then they will have these little tiny lines kind of connecting the two, but you don't need to fully draw each and every single one. You can leave a little bit of space. The same thing for the one up at the top, but the dots at the top will be a little bit further up. And then as they round around the bottom, they're going to be a little bit closer to the center. So for the final part of this, you're just gonna see me adding more details and just deepening those shadows. So I'm just taking a super tiny detail brush and creating those lines that connect the dots to the center. Um, and then you'll see that I'll just add a little bit of darkness to some of the shadows on the petals. So I create a little bit more of a darker pink, just adding a bit of its contrasting color or even you could add the indigo color to your pink and it just creates the shadow color. And then we'll go back in add some more depth to the pink and to the green leaves and the stems and you can just keep going until you feel like it's done and that is about it.
Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you enjoyed this series of pink flowers that I did with Jillian Boone from Brush Movement here on YouTube. Please make sure to head over to her channel, watch her version of these flowers. They are absolutely stunning. I love working with her and other artists. This is so much fun. So make sure you go and subscribe if you're not already and I will see you guys in our next video. Have a great day. Bye.